This boy always loved researching dinosaurs and wished to meet them. It seemed impossible until he found a time machine that took him back to the Stone Age. Ernie Fitzpatrick is a young, enthusiastic boy who is obsessed with dinosaurs. Luckily, he lives in the town of Terradino, which is the town where more dinosaur fossils were discovered than any other place in the world. It even has a mysterious giant rock with carvings, which date all the way back to the Cretaceous period. Ernie's favorite hobby is wandering in the town on his skateboard or visiting the museums to witness the fossil collection. However, he needs to dodge his annoying sister Julia and his overprotective mother Sue. On his way to the museum, Julia reminds him that he needs to look after the flower shop because their mother has to attend a ceremony, but Ernie doesn't care. He even gives a penny to Julia so she can call their mother to complain about him. On reaching the shop, Ernie changes the break time and continues rushing towards the museum. He also picks up his best friend Max, whose dad, Mr. Santiago, is a talented scientist. He even helped Ernie in building a rocket skateboard. Mr. Santiago also loves dinosaurs, and he recently discovered a new fossil. It will be exhibited tomorrow, but Ernie gets impatient and decides to sneak into the museum warehouse. Luckily, the security guard is sleeping and the door is open too. The kids find the new exhibit, but it's covered in a giant sheet. Max suggests that they should return to the shop before Sue arrives, but Ernie doesn't want to leave without seeing the fossil. He cleverly passes the motion detector and uncovers the magnificent structure of the beast called the Sarcosuchus. Ernie gets lost in staring at the deadly teeth and doesn't realize that Julia has followed him to the museum. She pulls out the penny Ernie gave him and throws it at the motion detector. The security alarm starts to ring and all the guards rush to the warehouse. Max and Ernie hide under the sheet and blindly drive the rocket board. They remember every inch of the museum and don't crash into anything. However, the security guard is really clever and uses the machines to pull away the sheet. The kids lose balance and crash into the dinosaur bones. Ernie is picked up by his mom who is really angry at his irresponsible behavior. He left the shop unattended and caused a scene in the museum. Sue is awarded as the best mother by the society because of her rules, but her own son doesn't obey her. Ernie tries to explain himself, but Sue asks him to be more responsible so everyone can count on him. Ernie apologizes but gets grounded for three weeks anyway. He sadly walks to his room while his sister keeps laughing at him. Three weeks is a huge time. Ernie can't even stay in his room for three minutes. As soon as he closes the door, he starts figuring out a way to escape. Luckily, the window is big enough for him to jump out. Julia notices him doing that and immediately prepares to get him caught again. Ernie goes straight to Max's house to see his dad's latest projects. Mr. Santiago has even sold his car to make more space in the garage for his experiments. Ernie excitedly asks about the egg-shaped time machine, but Mr. Santiago still hasn't completed it even after four years of hard work. He does a test run in front of the kids, but the machine shuts down by itself. Mr. Santiago goes to grab his toolbox while he lets the kids enjoy soda. Suddenly, Julia comes forward clicking pictures and threatens to get Ernie grounded for three years. Ernie gets really angry and runs after his sister to get back the phone. Max tries to stop them, but they keep running around the time machine while spilling soda everywhere. Some of it also falls on the machine wires and the control system. It miraculously fixes the machine and the doors start closing by themselves. Everything starts to shake and make the kids panic. After a while, the machine stops moving so Ernie presses the exit button. The machine opens up in the middle of an unknown forest and the kids get greeted by no other than a giant female Tyrannosaurus. Julia immediately pretends to fall unconscious and wishes that it's just a dream, but she's wrong. They have actually traveled back in time to the dinosaur era. Max tries to turn on the time machine before the Tyrannosaurus eats them, but Ernie notices that the situation is different from what they think. Due to the egg-like shape of the time machine, the Tyrannosaurus believes that the kids are her newborn babies. Ernie gets really excited to see a real dinosaur and gets on his skateboard to have a closer look. The Tyrannosaurus also seems amused and circles around the kids. Accidentally, her tail hits the time machine and the power key falls away. Suddenly, the Tyrannosaurus makes weird sounds to call the other dinosaurs. They talk in their own language and congratulate the Tyrannosaurus on the birth of her babies. She's called Tyra, and she's the strongest one alive. Tyra has been taking care of everyone and looked after a lot of orphans. Finally, she got her own egg and the babies. Tyra says thanks to all her fellows and promises to keep protecting them from the evil Sarcosuchus. She even expects her kids to grow up to protect the kingdom, but little does she know, her kids aren't even dinosaurs. While Tyra is busy talking with her friends, the kids start planning how to return to their real time. Ernest wants to stay a little longer as he may never get another chance to explore his passion so closely, but Julia and Max don't agree. 
They try to turn on the time machine, but the power key is missing. Ernie finds the power key but hides it in his pocket so he can spend more time with the dinosaurs. Meanwhile, Sue goes to call Ernie for dinner and finally realizes that he escaped from the window. She goes to check on Julia, but the little girl left a note saying that she went after Ernie. Sue can't just sit and wait for the kids, so she starts wondering where Ernie can go. After the museum, his favorite place is Max's house. Mr. Santiago is glad to see Sue and welcomes her inside the house, but she is only here to find her kids. They go to the garage but don't find anyone. Moreover, in place of the time machine, there's a Tyrannosaurus's egg. Mr. Santiago immediately understands what happened. His time machine works by transferal, as the egg is from the Cretaceous period so the kids must have traveled to that time. He gets excited to find out that his time machine worked, but Sue doesn't seem happy. She can't believe that her kids have traveled millions of years away from her without adult supervision. Little does she know, the Tyrannosaurus is no less than a real mom. She also has strict rules and doesn't let the kids wander around. After a while, someone arrives to meet them. It's an unknown type of small dinosaur named Dodger. As he's the youngest one adopted by Tyra, Dodger always wanted to have more siblings to play with. He gets really happy to see the kids and jumps around them in excitement. Tyra asks Dodger to keep a strict eye on kids because they must be protected from the evil Sarcosuchus. However, Sarcosuchus has sent a group of birds to bring all the updates about the other dinosaurs. They have been living in the lower valley for years but it's getting worse each day. The volcano can erupt any time and it will destroy the lower valley along with the Sarcosuchus. Therefore, they want to get rid of Tyra and take over the beautiful upper valley. The birds inform them about the kids and also mention the time machine. They assume that it's another egg which they can steal to lure Tyra. Once she gets inside the loser valley, the Sarcosuchus can defeat her easily and can take over the upper valley. The Sarcosuchus love the plan and order the birds to bring the egg as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Tyra is busy admiring her babies and makes a comfortable bed for them to sleep. She can't wait to teach them all she knows so the kids can grow up to become the protectors of the valley like her. Once Tyra goes to sleep, Ernie suggests that they should sneak out. But Julia is afraid of the dark, so they have to wait till the sunrise. The next morning, the kids sneak out before Tyra wakes up. They keep exploring the forest but can't find the power key. Suddenly, they hear some scary sounds and run to save themselves. It is just Dodger who came looking for them but the kids get startled and accidentally fall in the river. Dodger also jumps after them and teaches the kids how to dodge the obstacles and slide down the waterfall safely. While trying to save himself, Ernie unintentionally loses the power key. One of the evil birds finds the key and swallows it like food. The kids safely reach the shore and get mesmerized by the majestic view of different kinds of dinosaurs. The risky water ride was definitely worth it. Ernie suddenly remembers about the power key and checks his pockets, but there's nothing. He still doesn't tell Max and Julia and decides to find the power key by himself. Tyra eventually finds them and takes the kid back to their nest. She also scolds Dodger for not being strict on the kids. They could have gone to the lower valley and eaten by the Sarcosuchus. Dodger apologizes for his mistake, but he believes that Tyra should prepare her babies to survive by themselves because sooner or later they need to become independent. Tyra agrees and starts training the kids. She teaches them how to gather food, wander through the forest and play with other dinosaurs. The kids are definitely having the best part of their lives. After the exciting day, the kids get really tired and go to sleep in their comfy nest. Meanwhile, Mr. Santiago is still waiting for the kids to return by themselves. Sue can't take it anymore and asks Mr. Santiago to build another time machine. Last one may have taken four years, but now they are starting from experience and Sue is here to help, so they may be able to build in four hours. The next morning, Ernie tries to sneak out to find the power key, but gets caught by Tyra. She is no less than Ernie's real mother. Julia wakes up too and checks the pictures she took on her phone. Suddenly, she notices that there are some mysterious footprints near their nest. They all start following them and reach the river. No one stays at the nest, so the evil birds take this chance to steal the time machine. While doing that, they accidentally drop the power key they swallowed earlier. On the other hand, Julia notices the tracks leading to the lower valley, but Tyra doesn't let the kids go there. They all return to the nest and Ernie immediately notices the power key. In excitement, he confesses that he hid the key earlier. Julia gets really angry and says that their mother was right. Ernie doesn't care about others' safety when it comes to having fun. Ernie doesn't argue back as they have already got the power key. It's time to return home. They all rush to the nest only to find that the time machine has been stolen. Julia starts crying and blames Ernie for trapping them in such a difficult situation. Tyra also feels sorry for her kids even though she doesn't know how important the time machine was. They also don't know that the evil birds have stolen the machine and they are waiting for Tyra to come looking for it. 
When she doesn't arrive for hours, the Sarcosuchus realize that the machine is not important for her. Tyra's most precious treasure is her babies. Therefore, Sarcosuchus order the evil birds to bring one of Tyra's babies. Unaware of what's coming their way, the kids are busy trying to figure out how to communicate with their parents. Even if they build another time machine, they don't know that the soda will turn it on. Ernie suddenly gets a genius idea. The mystery rock is only thing that is still the same in their city, so if they carve the soda symbol on it, their parents in the future may see it. The kids get ready to draw the symbol while their parents have finally built the time machine using Sue's car. Being a single dad, Mr. Santiago often gives up on projects because of laziness, but this time Sue was there to force him to keep going. He admires her spirit and says that Ernie definitely got his energy from his mom. Sue is also convinced of Mr. Santiago's talent and will love to hang out again in the future. After putting the final touches, they get in the time machine and turn it on, but it doesn't work. They need to figure out the changes the kids made in the time machine. Before they can start thinking, the dinosaur egg in their garage hatches and a baby jumps out of it. It gets frustrated by the unfamiliar surroundings and runs outside. Mr. Santiago immediately turns on the car and runs after the dinosaur. Meanwhile, Ernie climbs on the mystery rocks to draw the symbol. Before he can do that, the evil birds arrive and kidnap Julia. Ernie leaves the symbol and runs after Julia along with others. He may have lost the power key and the time machine, but he will not lose his sister. Everyone else reaches the cave in the lower valley to rescue Julia while Ernie uses his skateboard to find a shortcut. He almost falls off a cliff but grabs on a flying dinosaur to reach the back of the cave. From there he finds a hidden entrance to the cave. He notices poor Tyra fighting the Sarcosuchus brothers alone. They grab her from both sides and try to suffocate her to death. Ernie can't let that happen so he uses his helmet to create loud noises. The Sarcosuchus gets startled and Tyra takes this chance to defeat them. Afterward, she takes Julia and Max and escapes the cave. The Sarcosuchus go after Tyra while they send the evil birds to capture Ernie. The poor kid runs at full speed but he reaches a dead end. Luckily Dodger notices him and uses a dinosaur skull to scare away the birds. Ernie rushes back to the cave and unites with his friends. However, the Sarcosuchus brothers have trapped them from both sides. Moreover, the cave starts to shake and it can fall down any time. Ernie wants to help Tyra but their time machine is just a few steps away. Julia can't lose the last chance to return home so she convinces Ernie and Max to get inside the time machine. As soon as they close the door, they fall into a tar pit. If they don't start the machine right now, it will be completely destroyed. However, Ernie can't be so selfish and leave behind Tyra like this. She took care of them like a mother and always protected them. Julia understands his concern and agrees to stand beside him no matter what. They turn off the machine and jump out of it. The kids distract Sarcosuchus and help Tyra defend herself. However, the cave can fall into pieces anytime. Ernie sacrifices his beloved skateboard to defeat one of the Sarcosuchus, while the other one proceeds towards them. Tyra jumps in to protect her kids and covers them with her body. All the stones fall on her while the kids are completely safe. Unfortunately, the Sarcosuchus survives too and wants to eat the kids as Tyra is no longer there to protect them. Meanwhile, Sue captures the baby dinosaur by luring him with burgers. She also gets a free soda with the burger deal and accidentally spills it on the car. Sue notices that the last minute repeated itself. Moreover, she also sees the soda symbol on the mystery stone. She immediately tells Mr. Santiago, and they use soda to turn on the time machine. They land in the lower valley cave and unite with their kids. Tyra also wakes up and bravely fights the Sarcosuchus before throwing him in the lava. Sue is afraid of Tyra, but the kids explain how she is like a mother to them. Tyra also notices that the kids have their own family and lets them go. Mr. Santiago realizes how sad Tyra is, but he has a surprise for her. It's her real dinosaur baby. She gets really excited to meet him, but her love for the human kids was real too. She gives them a warm hug and sends them away with best wishes. While traveling in the time machine, Ernie remembers that he never finished the carving on the mystery rocks. Then who did it? As he says that, Dodger jumps out of the back seat and confesses that he made the legendary carvings. 